Miss Cindy. I'm back again from the Animal Free Library and I'm visiting another farm. My goat friend here lives on the farm of Dennis and Karen Grubb. And he's very hungry. Look at that. In Anvil, we have farms all around us. Anvil was really building as a farming community. The other day we were out in South Anvil, and now we're in North Anvil. Say goodbye to the goat. <gasps> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Dennis and Karen also have chickens, and we're gonna have some stories about chickens today. I think you might know this. You might be able to say this with me. A big fat hen, see if you can count. One, two. Buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Look at those chicks. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. And her friends. Oh, look at them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And all their eggs. Lots and lots of eggs and lots and lots of chicks. <laughs> Parents look for books and songs like this that encourage counting activities and build counting into your everyday activities like dressing, how many buttons on your shirt, eating, how many crackers are on your plate. When you're waiting for a red light, how many cars pass by? Just look for opportunities all day long that you can do counting activities together. Well, look what I have here. little chicks. See if you can count with me again. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. And her chicks, oh, they're so soft. They're really not too long ago that they hatched from their eggs and they're growing, growing every day. Thank you for visiting with us today. We have another story, Hurry, Hurry by Eve Bunting, illustrated by Jeff Mack. I wonder why everyone is in such a hurry. Does that yellow remind you of something we just saw? Mm -hmm. Well, here's a chicken on the farm. All the other animals are there. And what is she saying? Hurry, hurry. Coming, coming. Ready, ready? Yes. Quick, quick, can't, can't. Try, try. Go, go. Good, good. Faster, faster. Run, run. They're all in a hurry. Where are they running to? What? Hurry! Hurry! <gasps> Shh! All the animals are looking at... There's an egg with the chickens in a nest. Tap! Tap, tap! Tap, tap, tap! Cheep, cheep! 
There's someone hatching. I'm here! I'm here! Yay! Welcome! Welcome! Hello, little one. Oh, there's another little chick to welcome. If I can find my Where's my chicken? And what's she sitting on? Mm -hmm. Five eggs and five eggs. That makes ten. Sitting on top is a mother hen. Crackety, crackety. What do I see? Ten little chicks looking at me. See if you can say it again. Just put your hands over top and see if you can pretend you have ten eggs. Five eggs and five eggs. That makes ten. Sitting on top is the mother hen. Crackety, crackety. What do I see? Ten little chicks looking at me. <laughs> We're going to try this. I don't know how it's going to go, but pretend you're inside an egg. Are you ready? Oh, take this off. Here inside, it's dark and warm. Baby chick begins to form. Tiny chick with tiny eyes. <gasps> Living, breathing, changing size. Till he peeks and he pokes and he pecks. Through the home he's had for weeks. Peeping chick with his wings outspread stretches up his little head. Sitting under mama's wing, baby chirps. It's spring! It's spring! Did you hatch out of your egg? <laughs> oh, here we have. Squeak. Hmm. One morning, Pip Squeak hatched out of his shell. All the other baby chicks were stretching and yawning, but not Pip Squeak. Because why? He was on the move. Can you say that with me? He was on the move. Pipsqueak fluttered. Pipsqueak hopped. But more than anything, Pipsqueak wanted to fly high. Don't even try, moved Big Brown Cow. You can't fly. But Pipsqueak did not listen. Because why? Are you ready? He was on the move. The big stone wall looked like the perfect place to take off. Pipsqueak jumped up, 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 and then he fell down, down, down into the soft green grass. My, oh my, bleated Big Sheep. You can't fly high. But Pipsqueak did not listen. Because why? He was on the move. The nice round hill looked like the perfect place to take off. Pipsqueak jumped up, 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 and then he fell down, down, down into the soft green grass. You're a little guy, quacked Yellow Duck. You can't fly high. But Pipsqueak did not listen. Because why? He was on the move. A tower of chicks looked like the perfect place to take off. Pipsqueak jumped up, 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 and then he fell down, down, down into the green grass. Silly Pipsqueak, squeaked Baby Bunny. Even if you try, you can't fly. But Pipsqueak 
week did not listen. Because why? He was on the move. The big rock looked like the perfect place to take off. Pipsqueak jumped up, 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 and then he fell down, down, down into the nice green grass. Pipsqueak jumped, he hopped, he flopped. Peepsqueak tried to fly all day long. He tried and he tried. He wasn't giving up, was he? But he could not fly, not high. His mama gave him a great big hug. Ah, uh, don't cry, little guy, honked the old gray goose as he lifted Pipsqueak up. <gasps> Pipsqueak held on tight, tight, tight to old gray goose and up they went. It's like he has his own airplane. Peepsqueak and old gray goose flew high, high, high. Up, up, up above the farm and the wall and the hill and the rock. They're looking down on the farm. And then down, down, down into the soft green grass. Whoa, you flew high, mooed Big Brown Cow. My, oh my, bleated Big Sheep. Up to the sky, quacked Yellow Duck. You flew high, squeaked Baby Bunny. Peep Squeak was as happy as he could be. Then he saw the pond, and he got another idea. fly high he found another way to get up in the sky and even though he didn't have webbed feet to swim he found another way to swim yay for peep squeak we're gonna finish up with a fun easter story minerva louise here's minerva louise and the colorful eggs by janet morgan stoke you see, Minerva Louise gets things kind of confused very often. Let's see what she's up to today. It looks like Easter, doesn't it? Those colorful dyed eggs. Minerva Louise loved the springtime. With all the colors, the farmyard looked fresh and bright. The apple trees looked so beautiful. They were all in bloom. And so did the farmers. They're all dressed up in their springtime best. Hmm, maybe I'd look pretty too if I put on a hat, said Minerva Louise. Hey! Who put an egg in my hat? Oh, you poor thing. Where is your mother? Minerva Louise warmed up the egg with her fluffy feathers. Then she looked around. She couldn't find its mother anywhere. But she did find another egg. Way up on the fence, she worried that it might fall. She also worried if she tried to keep it warm, she might fall. Oh, no. Some hen is forgetting her eggs, said Minerva Louise. <gasps> and look at all the eggs. I can't warm all of them by myself. So she ran to the barn to tell her friends. Look, 
she said, I'm finding eggs outside and some of them are so cold, they're turning blue. The hens grumbled at being woken up, but they were curious. No one had seen blue eggs before. They went out to look for the eggs, but they were all gone. Where did the eggs go? asked Minerva Louise. Who is she asking? Hmm? The little brown bunny? But the little brown bunny didn't seem to know. You know why? Silly Minerva Louise. And she went over there and she couldn't get an answer from the baby chicks either. They didn't say a word. Do you know why? Silly Minerva Louise. Wait, she said, look up there. It was an egg, but this one had spots and green stripes. And then all of a sudden, it was gone. A little hand had snatched it up. There were farmers all around running and laughing and picking up eggs. Whew. The hens felt better. They were used to farmers picking up eggs. They went back to the hen house for a nap. But not Minerva Louise. She had found the perfect nest. She's always getting things mixed up. Well, happy Easter, Minerva Louise. <laughs> In your pack, you have an egg shape cut out of some old wallpaper samples. And on the back, you can find a line to cat up, down, up, down. And then you'll have two pieces of egg. And here's your round circle. You need to put your eyes and your beak on your chick and glue it into the back of your bottom part of your egg and then we have these brass fasteners that you put through the hole in the side and then oh, crackety crackety crack you can make your chick hatch parents just for safety you might want to put some scotch tape on the back of the brass fastener or just glue the egg open if you don't want to use the brass gas. <sighs> we have a few other books I just want to show you really quick that we have at the library. Here's Peter Easter Frog. <laughs> Here comes Peter Easter Frog. It just doesn't sound quite right, does it? It's very funny. We have more books about Minerva Louise. Here we get her introduced. Here's a friend for Minerva Louise, a hat for Minerva Louise, and Minerva Louise goes to school, all by Janet Morgan Stoke. And here's Doris Chicks by Julie Sykes and Jane Chapman. This is all about her chicks, but before her chicks are the eggs. Which came first? The chickens? Or the eggs. You might want to read about Dora. Or maybe try Kate Hudson's The Runaway Egg. Very funny. Well, it's time for me to say goodbye. Can you sing with me? See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Give a hug. Ladybugs blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, you old raccoon. Out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear. Wave goodbye, butterfly. See you in two weeks. <laughs>